Good YouTube, Quinn Wade coming to y'all with some basketball analysis on YouTube and on analysisplayground.com. We're going to talk about the Phoenix Suns losing to the Golden State Warriors. I feel like this was a blowout. This was a really bad game for the Phoenix Suns. They didn't really do much right, or if not anything, besides finish the game. <laughs> and that was really about it because when you look at the first quarter, 32 to 19, they really wasn't scoring that well. They really wasn't getting good ball movement. They looked as slow. They looked as sluggish. And they didn't really execute the way they needed to. And then the second quarter, it got even worse. They only had 14 points. But they, they did hold the Warriors to 18 points only. But when you look at the third quarter, it went another high-scoring qu quarter for the Golden State Warriors, 24-22. to 22. And then, you know, they've had another low-scoring fourth quarter, um, 18 points to 16. The Warriors didn't score as much in the fourth quarter, but they was able to dominate throughout the entire game, making it really, you know, useless to even play that fourth quarter. That's how bad it looked at some points. And when you look at this game, it's just interesting to see where the Suns go from here um, in summer league because I don't really know what they're looking for. I don't really know what their guys are really playing for. Like, he emptied the bench tonight besides Walters and – He's a guy I probably didn't want to really want to see based off what I've seen today. But 26 minutes done, three, three or seven from the field, six points only, negative five and plus minus five person. I mean, two personal fouls, four turnovers. He did have two blocks and he did finish the game with three steals. He had two assists, four rebounds. One of them was offensive, but he was 0-3 from the three-point line. Didn't really do much outside of being a great you know, defender when it comes to stats, but not overall throughout the entire game. Um, you can say the same thing about this Ejo Rado guy. Six points, negative seven, and plus minus three personal fouls. He had one turnover. He did have two blocks also, but he only had one steal, five rebounds. Three of them was offensive, but he was three of eight from the field. They couldn't really get much from their bigs, um, and they didn't really get much from their wing, uh, who was Roddy. He shot the ball terrible tonight, 4 of 14 from the field, 2 of 8 from the three-point line, and 1 came late when the game was already over, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, 1 offensive rebound, 7 rebounds total. He did have 1 assist, 2 blocks, uh, 4 turnovers, and 3 personal fouls, negative 17 and plus minus. Bowie also didn't contribute much, 8 points, negative 6 and plus minus, 1 personal foul, 1 turnover, 3 Assists six and seven from the free throw line, oh, three from the three point line, one and five from the field. Devo was the only guy that was really consistent in shots. He just needed to play make just a little bit more because he was the only guy that you can really put the ball in the hand. He did something productive. Uh, 11 or 13 from the free throw line, he was four or seven from the field. Really, really good getting to the free throw line tonight. Four rebounds, one of, of them was offensive, four assists, two steals. He had one turnover. Two personal fouls, negative 11 and plus minus. Um, Wong, Isaiah Wong, one point plus four and plus minus. He had one or two from the free throw line, only two minutes that he played. Uh, Franks only played 14 minutes, but one of four from the field, one of th three from the three-point line. Two of them was offensive rebounds out of his five. One assist, two turnovers, two personal fouls, negative six and plus minus. But he only had three points. Samuel, you know, he was a guy that just played two minutes, didn't really do much because of that reason, plus four and plus minus. Um, Weathers, <laughs> three of nine uh, from the field, or oh, three from the three-point line, one of three from the free throw line. He didn't really do much outside of grabbing three rebounds and contributing seven points, but he did get three steals and one block. He had five turnovers, so he was a little erratic and out of control. Um, he did have four personal fouls and negative three and plus minus. Um, Bridges, uh, 18 minutes was played. He did finish the, the, the game 2 of 4 uh, from the field, 1 of 3 from the three point line. He also had three rebounds and two of them was offensive. He had one assist and one steal, two personal fouls, negative 20 and plus minus five points. Um, you look at Johnson uh, and Will Walker first. He had three points and negative two and plus minus one personal foul, one turnover. He had two steals, one assist, one of three from the Three-point line, one of four from the field. Johnson, 0 of one from the field. That was his only attempt, plus four and plus minus. Lewis, 0 of five from the field. 0 of three from the three-point line. He had one steal, negative four and plus minus. 
And Osborne, 101 from the field, 101 from three. He had two rebounds, plus four and plus minus three points. Ultimately, 33% from the field, 18% from three. That's just abysmal. That's terrible. And it was six of 32. Look at all those threes that they attempted throughout this game and was only able to make six of them. They compensated, because, like I said, Devo did get two. The free throw line a lot, and so did some other guy that contributed it too. 21 to 27, 77% from the free throw line. They did have uh, 13 steals and seven blocks this entire game, but they kind of didn't work out because of the 19 turnovers as a team. And they also had 20 personal fouls as a team. And you just can't win that way when you shoot that poorly from the field. The Warriors, as a team, they shot 44% from the field, 31% from three, 10 to 32. And they did shoot 75% from the free throw line. So you lost in all those categories. And they shot 12 of 16. And then you look at the fact that they also had 11 steals. And they also had seven blocks. But they, they had the 19 turnovers and the 20 personal fouls, too. But... You know, they made the better percentage of those, and those are opportunities you can't give when you're not scoring the ball at all from the field or from the three. But Jackson, 10 points, plus 12 and plus minus, three personal fouls, two turnovers, two assists, seven rebounds, three of them was offensive, two or two from the free throw line, four or five from the field. Row, 14 points, plus 10 and plus minus, two personal fouls, two turnovers, one block. He did have four steals, two assists, nine rebounds. This stuff, the stat sheet today. Uh, two of them was offensive, two of six from the three-point line. But he did finish the game six of ten from the field, which you, you would like to see. Potten Zimski, um, 16 points plus 13 and plus minus one personal foul, three turnovers, two steals, six assists. He did have seven rebounds. One of them was offensive, five of five from the free throw line, three of six from the three-point line, uh, four of ten from the field. Collins, three of six from the field, or one from three, um, three rebounds, five assists. Two steals, seven turnovers, which is the high of the game. Really was sloppy with the ball. Really couldn't make decisions. Really was doing it careless, too. And he also added on five personal fouls, plus 11 and plus minus is what they gave him, six points. Uh, 19 points for Plowden. He really was aggressive attacking the paint and making threes. Three or four from the three-point line, eight or 12 from the field. or two from the free throw line. One offensive rebound, two rebounds total. Two assists, he did get one still in one block and was just flowing throughout the paint and just looking for his shot as much as he can. And if you're going to be that efficient and that effective while still being able to trust your teammates to do the same, that's a great game plan. And the Warriors executed it very well tonight. Um, two points for uh, for Rub, uh, plus 10 and plus minus. One, two personal fouls, one turnover, one block. Three assists, one rebound, over four from three, one of six from the field. Just didn't score well in the 16 minutes that he played. Thompson, 22 points, two of 11. Really shot the ball poorly, even from three, one of four. Free throw line, only shot one of two. We'd like to see more from those areas. He also had five rebounds, two of them was offensive. One assist, one steal, three blocks, uh, one personal foul, plus 14 and plus minus six points. Three for ball win points wise, plus five and plus minus one personal foul, two turnovers, one steal, three rebounds. One of them was offensive, one or two from the free throw line. That's what he shot also from the field. Witt Jr., uh, negative four and plus minus one personal foul. Everything else was scoreless and statless. Kevin Knox, the second, 17 minutes played. He finished three of 11, 0 of five. Three or three from the free throw line. That was the best thing he did tonight. Outside of grabbing seven rebounds, uh, one of them was offensive, one assist. He didn't really look good or like he developed too much offensively. He's still struggling to finish inside the paint, still struggling to shoot well from the perimeter, whether that's mid range or three. But his length and his size is something that you can't teach. It keeps people guessing and wondering what can he contribute to the team besides great stances and the ability to potentially just be a 3 and D guy. 
I didn't really see the three tonight because he was 0-5, but that's a shot that teams are giving him. They're letting him take it. He's not putting the ball on the floor. He's not turning them down for mid-ranges. He's not turning them down for floaters. And even if he did, like we've seen tonight, he wasn't making those shots anyway, even if he was in that area without creating it off the dribble himself. So no the real development off Kevin Knox. But he has been in the league for a while, and he finds himself back in summer league for more development um, every year. Scott, uh, five points, plus one and plus minus, one personal foul, one block, two rebounds, one of was offensive, one or two from the three-point line, two or three from the field. What you can take away from this game is that the Warriors don't have that bad of a bench, possibly, depending on the health of Steph Curry and the playmaking of Draymond. Obviously, Wiggins is going to have to have one of his biggest years just to make this roster good again. Um, they they showed that they're going to lose Clay. They replaced him with Buddy Hill, who is a guy that can get buckets from mid-range and from the two, and he can get to the paint because he's quick enough and he, he's tall enough to take advantage of those things. But the Warriors are worse than they were before, but they're not that much worse. Plus, we don't really know what's going to happen with these other teams. Who's going to want to trade? Who's going to rebuild? Who's going to fire or sell their roster in the middle of the season when things don't go right? And it's looking like they have to blow it up early. The Warriors can take advantage of those type of situations. But I think that even if they do make the playoffs or the play-in tournament, it's going to be sad because I don't look at this team as a contender. Um, even if things go right, it just things are only going to go right for them to be a playoff team, not for them to be a team that can win the championship. But at least they're competitive. At least they're fun to see. And I feel like they're going to execute the way that they did in summer league. And they're going to move the ball. And guys are going to get easy opportunities. Like Plowden, who's a sneaky guy that they really stole. And, you know, he looks good. And some of these other guys play hard, set screens, pass the ball, finish at the rim, make your mid-range, make your threes. They are just plug-and-play type of guys for the Warriors. And this is what they actually need. You know, it's depth. You know, if they're not going to have a great starting five or out the out, out of the right crazy starting five, at least have guys that can chip in and contribute and do small things on and off the court that can help this team communicate and do it on the court. And then you're just playing a tough team to defend and a tough team to execute against, you know, each and every night. And that can be 47, 48 wins. And that's just enough for you to be competitive for a playoff spot. And then you can rest so you don't have to play in the playing tournament. But if you get in that playing range, at least you know you got guys that can go out there and get the job done. And that's something that you questioned the last year. That's something that I see them answering with their moves this year. Now it's just about how good would they be and what they can become. And I say playoff caliber team, and that's it. You know, no more championships. And Steve Kerr was saying that this is may be the end of our run as a championship team he said that two years ago and now you seeing it become reality each and every year as they're just holding on for dear life while steph is still under his super max to still be competitive and that's about it other than that comment like subscribe and share hit the notification bell for more analysis got over 2,000 classics on my channel that you gotta see most people will vouch for that that has been on this channel a part of it but for the people that's new and seeing this for the first time Support the channel as much as you can. All you got to do is click subscribe and watch as many classes as you can, even if they're old or new. And that's the best way to support. Other than that, I'm gone.